Welcome to the WISE Introduction to Bootstrapping. In this video we're going to look at the logic of bootstrapping and some applications. Uh, we'll use an interactive demo that's available on the WISE website. I'll click on the link. The WISE website has a lot of material in support of uh, teaching and learning statistics. Today we're going to use the demo uh, bootstrapping demo. So I'll click on that and here is the uh, demo. This uh, blue figure represents a population and we're going to draw a sample from that population and our interest is in estimating the population mean. Now I'll simulate that uh, by, well we'll select the sample size and we can say, pick anything from 10 to 99. Uh, let's pick a sample of say size 30. If I get close I can use an arrow key. I'll press the left arrow key and get to the exact value that I want is 30. Now when I click the sample button, bingo, we observe a sample drawn randomly from this population. Now our sample mean is 35.4 and that would give us our best estimate of the population mean. But it's important to be also have some way of communicating how stable that estimate is or how accurate that estimate is likely to be. And conventionally this is done with confidence intervals where we can specify likely limits for the population mean based on our observed sample mean such that we could say it, these limits have a 95 percent chance of capturing the population mean. And conventionally the way this is done is we assume that the population distribution is normal then applying the central limit theorem uh, that tells us that the distribution of possible means is also normal and we can use our sample standard deviation to make an estimate of the population standard deviation and then make an estimate of the standard, standard error of this distribution of means and compute confidence limits that cut off the middle 95% and 2.5% uh, on each tail. So that's, that's a conventional approach. Uh, we have a video on that that you could uh, check out. Um, but with bootstrapping, uh, the logic is quite different. Now with bootstrapping, we treat this observed sample distribution as all of the information that we have about the population. We don't assume anything about the population other than we take information from our observed sample. And we simulate then drawing samples of whatever size we have, in this case 30, from our original sample. And I'll demonstrate that. Uh, we can hit the resample button and what we get is a sample of 30 cases drawn from our original sample but with replacement. Meaning that uh, we treat that as a population where we might get more than one observation of a particular value as we, we did here. And there's some other values that we don't observe at all from this original uh, distribution. Uh, but we get an estimate of the population mean from this uh, resample. But that's not the only estimate we could have gotten. If we took a different resample, uh, we would get a different estimate of that mean. Um, and we could try another one or two. And you'll see that, in fact, using this procedure, we can generate an empirical distribution of possible means that you could get for samples of size 30 in this case drawn from a population that looks like our sample. And with that we can get some sense of the stability of our sample mean. Now if we just do this a few times uh, these limits are quite unstable. Uh, but with the computer it's very easy to continue drawing samples a very large number of, and we have built in here that we could draw 10,000 resamples. So now what we're going to do is calculate 10,000 sample means of 30 cases drawn randomly from this uh, population that looks like our, our original sample. And here we go. So this distribution now has in it 10,000 
means and these limits are the confidence limits from bootstrapping now the way those are calculated is they cut off the middle 95 percent leaving two and a half percent in each tail with 10,000 means there would be 9,500 in the middle and 250 in each tail and what the computer has done literally is just start at the end and count 250 means that we've calculated to find what is the value of the 250th from each end. This gives us now limits where we could say we have 95 percent confidence that these limits have in fact captured the population mean. Now just for comparison I've calculated these limits using the conventional approach that assumes a normal distribution. I've created a, a little Excel spreadsheet that has in it a place to put the mean which was 35.4 the standard deviation uh, the sample size and alpha and it computes then the limits assuming a normal uh, population notice it's really very close to what the bootstrapping gave us 31.39 versus 31.35 39.36 versus 39.45. Uh, they're not always that close, but um, the point here is that the bootstrapping confidence interval is really very comparable to the conventional way of computing uh, confidence intervals when we have a true normal uh, population distribution. But the real advantage of uh, bootstrapping comes in when we don't have a normal distribution in the population. Uh, if we have a very skewed distribution, then the confidence intervals calculated in the conventional way really might be quite inaccurate. Let's take a look at one of those. Uh, here we have a very skewed population distribution that we've built in, and we could draw a sample of 30 cases from that distribution. And here we see the sample has quite a few scores at the bottom end where the population has a higher density, and there are fewer off at the top end. This would be a case where we would not want to assume that the population distribution is normal and so the conventional approach to calculating a confidence interval would not apply. But we can apply bootstrapping and if I click the resample button here we have uh, uh, limits we could say we have 95 percent confidence that these limits in fact have captured the population mean. A very substantial uh, advantage of bootstrapping is that we can calculate confidence intervals for statistics other than the mean. Uh, for example, we could calculate the median of this distribution. The median is 12.59, and uh, we might like to have a confidence interval for that. You know, when you have a skewed distribution, the median may be a more useful statistic than the mean because the mean is relatively unstable depends on a few extreme scores, whereas the median is much more stable. Uh, if we do the resampling, we get a rather strange distribution because you know some values of medians are not possible if we don't have the scores in our population that we're sampling from. Uh, you, you can't get that score as a median. But we still can get a confidence interval for the median using exactly the same logic. What we've done is drawn 10,000 samples of 30 cases each with replacement from our observed sample and we get then a range of what the medians might look like. These are our medians. Uh, this applet also allows us to customize. We can make any kind of distribution that we want. I'm holding down the left mouse on the, uh, on the mouse and I can put values, oh, we put something in the middle here and go on out and put something at the end. And now if we draw a sample of 30 cases, uh, it's a very strange sample, but we could still go ahead and con calculate a confidence interval for the median or uh, for the mean if we'd want. Something else just to comment on is uh, to note that when we uh, take our resample with our 10,000 cases, uh, those limits are really pretty stable. Uh, we could take a larger number of resamples and they would shift maybe a little bit. Notice we have 41.38. I'll hit the resample button. 
went up to 41.39. Do it again. Doesn't actually change much. Back down to 38 and so forth. Uh, so with the original 10,000 cases, we have almost the same value as when we go with 100,000 cases. Uh, but the point is the these limits from resampling um, are slightly unstable just because uh, they're, they depend on chance for what samples you happen to get. But you can make them as stable as you want by making the number of resamples larger. The bigger issue is if we had a different sample, we would very well get a different confidence interval. Now, just to recall that 95% confidence intervals are defined as having a 95% chance of capturing the true population mean. The implication is that occasionally uh, we'll miss. And some individual might draw a sample just like anyone else and miss. So here's a case where a person has a quite nice looking sample distribution and uh, makes an estimate of the population mean of being 31 quite a bit below the actual mean and the confidence limit misses. But following these procedures on average 95% of the time we should have a confidence interval that does in fact capture the true population mean. To recap to construct a bootstrapping confidence interval, uh, we consider the original sample to be our best estimate of the population distribution. We draw a sample of the same size as our original sample with replacement from the original sample and record the statistic of interest. In our case, it was a mean and do that many, many, many times to generate the sampling distribution of possible means for samples of that size, and then just count off the value that uh, identifies the bottom 2.5% and the top 2.5%. Okay, this uh, demo was programmed by Chris Pentany. Uh, here we have a uh, reference if you need a reference for this video and uh, we thank you for watching.